What a ride it's been this past year. The Roads Must Roll has grown into the most complete toolkit yet for designing roads, bridges and intersections in Blender. One year ago I made a promise to you in my very first video. And there is more. I have decided to add the most requested feature to the add-on. Back then I ran a poll and 41 of you took the time to fill it out, which was super cool to see. The two most requested features were clear. A wet version of the materials and a damaged version of the asphalt and pavement materials. Now, one year later, I'm proud to say that not only have I made those two popular requests a reality, but I've added 15 exciting new features on top of that. Let's explore all of them together. Just to clarify, in this video I'll mostly be using the business license version of the Roads Must Roll, which includes 12 additional vehicles compared to the portfolio version. To start off, one of the most requested features, water effects. I often see that water is simply placed on top of a surface with a mask and that's it. But that's exactly what I want to avoid. As you can see here, my water effects take into account height differences between tiles as well as the deeper joints in between. Water that lands on a surface can look very different depending on how long it has been drying after a rain shower. That's why I've created three separate parameters to achieve the most realistic result possible. Let's apply these parameters one by one on this scene. We'll start with the wet surface amount and gradually increase it. And of course, we also want to add some puddles. Not too much. Just subtly. Now let's play a bit with the roughness of the wet surfaces and then add a few more puddles again. Every water effect works perfectly with the main materials in The Roads Must Roll. Is your city cutting budgets again? No problem, just switch to the damaged asphalt material, another popular request that has now been fulfilled. The world is full of different sidewalks, it's almost overwhelming. That's why I've included a diverse collection of no less than 19 different pavement materials. On top of that, there's a whole set of options to tweak the tiles procedurally. You can turn the utility covers on or off. You can control how many broken tiles there are. You can switch the layout to a half offset pattern. And of course, you can make your sidewalk beautifully dirty. We all know what it feels like when your viewport moves at the speed of a 1990s desktop PC. That's why I've expanded the performance options. You can now choose to display ultra low poly vehicles only in the viewport. When you hit render, the high poly versions are used automatically. And the same goes for the included trees. This way you can work in a smooth responsive viewport without having to constantly switch back and forth before and after rendering. I've done the same for the main textures. You can display them in a low resolution in the viewport while still rendering them in high resolution. I have added six fully integrated vehicles to the small studio license and no fewer than 12 to the business license. Each vehicle features optimized geometry, only 20 to 40,000 triangles per model, ensuring excellent performance in your scenes. And to make your renders even more lifelike, every vehicle comes with randomized body colors. If you want your bridge to stay up in the air, you're gonna need some pillars. That's just how physics works. And of course, pillars come in all shapes and sizes. I created 10 new types of pillars. 
and I also made two fancy fork-shaped pillars, available in both single and double versions. You want to use a specific material, but it's not in the presets? No problem. For all the main material types, you can simply import your own textures. Just follow the steps shown in the rendered viewport when you select one of the user material slots in the modifier panel. That even works for the panels on the overhead signs. Do you ever get that weird feeling like you've already lived through this exact same situation before? Well, there is a very good chance you're on a roundabout. This was another very popular request. I've added two roundabout presets and a T-junction. Oh, and uh, if you want to create your own personalized traffic junctions, check out the tutorial video I made. Links in the description. Some nights feel extra dark and gloomy. That's why I made it possible to precisely control the brightness of all vehicle lights. Both headlight and taillight brightness can be adjusted separately, giving you full creative control. No man is an island, as the saying goes. But sometimes it's useful to turn a sidewalk or a road shoulder into an island. As you can see here, I've created a separate procedural asset that you can shape however you like. All the settings that are available for the main road materials are also accessible in the modifier panel for this asset. Originally, traffic was always tied to the curve of the road you created. That meant you couldn't really make traffic flow from one road segment to another. It was kind of stuck. So I made a separate asset that lets you create an independent curve just for your traffic. Now you can easily create intersections with traffic that actually drives across them. The vehicle wheels now rotate during animation. Very useful for close-up traffic shots, of course. And you can now also adjust the wheel rotation speed for standalone vehicle assets. You now also have the option to add a low-poly driver to your vehicles. Time to take a dive into the roadside? I've added seven brand new materials just for that. Everything from different kinds of grass, to dirt, to good old sand. Motion blur is essential for a professional workflow. And I've spent a lot of time making sure it now works consistently. Besides these major updates, I've also made countless smaller improvements. A few examples. All the changes I applied to the main road asset have also been applied to the other assets, such as the path asset. There is now an asset in the asset browser that lets you import all assets at once, for better efficiency. You can now use your own tree collection too. And many other things too numerous to mention. To put the extra cars you get with the commercial licenses into perspective, a single model of this quality typically costs around $35 or more. That means the 12 car models included in the small studio license alone are worth at least $420. For the 18 vehicles included in the business license, that's even $630 in value. But as I said, these models are actually worth even more. It takes a lot of time and effort to make all the adjustments so they can be part of a fully animated traffic flow with all the included features. All these vehicles allow you to create scenes with more variation and realism. If you haven't purchased The Roads Must Roll yet, the latest version is now available on Superhive and Flipped Normals. You can find the links below this video. If you would like to help shape the future of the tool, there is a new community survey where you can vote for the next features you would love to see. The link is also down below.
Arthur Chais, a multiple award-winning film director and 3D artist, used the Rotsmus role in his film Lune de Miel. If you haven't seen it yet, I've made a short video about it. You'll find it on my channel. And finally, I've got a secret little gift only for those special people who made it this far into the video. The first five people who purchase any license type of the Roads Must Roll will get 20% off using the coupon code RMR Hidden Gift. Let me repeat that. The coupon code can only be used five times. After that, it's gone. Developing new features takes a lot of time. And your support really helps me keep improving the roads must roll and building new functions. And if you want to stay updated on new releases and tutorials, don't forget to hit that famous subscribe button below the video. Thank you and see you soon.